Hello everybody. Welcome to Dialogues for Change. Life is not a void to be filled. It is a plenitude to be discovered. Today, I would like to share with you some thoughts by Jackie Chan, taken from his book, My Life in Action, which is his autobiography. Jackie Chan is somebody who inspired me very much, because I'm also practicing martial arts. And so when I was younger, I always went to see his movies, and my friends at school even called me Jackie. And it's not only that the martial arts inspired me, but somehow his movies gave me good inspirations and contributed to give me this idea to become a good person. So that's why I would like to share some thoughts with you on the question of ego that I really found quite inspiring. But after Drunken Master, I had my first real taste of what it was like being a celebrity. People ran up to me in public, asking for my autograph. I would see kids playing Drunken Master in the street, weaving and rolling their arms. Newspapers started calling me for interviews, and gossip magazines sent reporters to follow me around. And NG wasn't stingy with the money my movie had earned. Instead of the 3,000 Hong Kong dollars that Lo Wei paid me per film, he gave me 50,000 Hong Kong dollars. More cash than I'd ever seen in my life. Instant fame and sudden fortune do things to people. I am human. And I'm not very proud of the kind of person I became. I was used to eating noodles in the street and sleeping on the floor of my little apartment. Now that I had money, I started to buy things that I'd always envied big star things, like gold chains and nice clothes. I looked at automobiles, trying to decide whether a Porsche or a Mercedes best fit my new image. I remember walking into the same jewelry shop where I bought gifts for my parents. This time I bought gifts for myself, seven watches, all Rolexes, one for each day of the week. I went into a boutique that I remember as being very snobbish, one that had warned me that the clothes they sold were too expensive for someone like me. This time, I had them bring out all of their clothes, one by one, as I sat there, nodding and shaking my head. Finally, I pointed at random items, not even making it particularly clear which ones I wanted, and told the staff to send them to my apartment. I could tell that the salespeople weren't sure which clothes, which clothes I picked, but they were afraid to let me know. It didn't matter. I intended to return some of them anyway, just to make life difficult for them. Everywhere I went, I was followed by a group of 20 people, stuntmen, acquaintances, and hangers-on. They weren't my bodyguards, and they weren't even really my friends. They were there because I had money and was willing to spend it. But I was blinded by my ego and pride. I started acting like a big shot in public, too. There's a hotel in Hong Kong called the Peninsula, the finest, most elegant place on the island. Of course, the rule in Hong Kong is that you must be dressed appropriately. A jacket, a tie, a suit, even a tuxedo. One afternoon, I strolled over to the peninsula with my gang of followers and walked through the front door, wearing shorts. It wasn't long before the commotion drew the manager, who recognized me as Jackie Chan, the movie star. <coughs> Mr. Chan, he said, his eyebrows quirking, we are of course honored to have your business, but we cannot allow you to eat here wearing short pants. Why not, I said, my followers clustered around me, nodding their heads and gesturing. Well, we have rules about proper attire, he said. Sweat beads beginning to appear on his upper lip. You must wear long pants. I looked at him in his sharply creased black suit, his bow tie and his crisp white shirt. He was the kind of guy who would have kicked me out if I'd come to the hotel just three months before. The type of patronizing jerk who cared more about how someone was dressed than what kind of a person he was. A well-dressed triad gangster could be seated here in an instant. Jackie Chan in short pants could not. Okay, I said, I'll wear long pants. Give me a pair of long pants and I'll put them on. The manager, flustered, said that it was all very irregular, but soon afterward left and returned with a pair of black slacks in my size. Right there in the peninsula lobby, I pulled them on over my shirts, shorts and then motioned to my people to follow me into the restaurant. I drank one cup of coffee and then motioned to my followers that it was time to leave. 
Next day, we came back. Mr. Chan, I'm sorry, said the manager again, this time quite agitated. What's wrong? I said innocently. I'm wearing long pants. But, but you're wearing a t-shirt, he said. We have a strict policy. I shrugged my shoulders. You said long pants. You never said anything about what kind of shirt. Let's go, boys. And we brushed past the manager into the restaurant, where I had my second cup of Peninsula coffee in two days. It was very immature. There was the kind of revenge I had been hungry for all my life. Somehow I'd realized that being famous meant I could break the rules without getting punished. I could make my own rules. And even if I was punished, having money meant that I could get away lightly. It isn't any different here in America. You see teenage idols on drugs or drunk or in jail. Too much, too quickly with no one ever telling them no. I was fortunate to have had my master and my father when I was younger, so I never got into any real trouble. But as I said, I'm not proud of the way that I behaved. Well, most of us are not superstars, or not even close to become superstars, but I think we're all confronted to our ego, and I think that these little experience that Jackie Chan is sharing with us in his autobiography may be a way for us to become a little more aware of when our ego starts to take over and maybe to realize it and also feel not so proud of that part of ourselves and open up a little more and cultivate our humility towards ourselves and others. I hope that these thoughts on Tuesday, 10th of January 2000 12 inspired you. Thank you.